Hello, hello, welcome to Art Toronto, and I'm your host, Tony. Now, building subway lines in Toronto has become increasingly expensive over the years, with costs rising significantly from the early days of the Young Subway Line to recent projects like the Shepherd Line and the current Scarborough Subway Extension. This trend is driven by a mix of factors, including inflation, more complex construction requirements, and shifts in planning and regulations. But it seems like it has become really expensive. The Young Subway Line, Toronto's first subway line, opened in 1954 and ran from Union Station to Eglinton Avenue, spanning about 7.4 kilometers. It cost approximately $67 million at that time, which equates today to roughly $670, after adjusting for inflation, of course. Built largely, largely as a cut and cover tunnel under Young Street, construction, construction was simpler than modern projects. Toronto's less developed landscape allowed for easier access to construction areas, and the planning and regulatory environment was much less, less complex than it is today. The Shepherd Subway Line, which opened in 2002 and covers only 5.5 kilometers in contrast from Young Street to Don Mills Road, had a final cost of approximately $1 billion. Adjusted to today's dollars and today's money, that's about $1.5 billion. Built decades after the Young Line, Shepherd involved more intensive tunneling and other engineering challenges, with construction taking place under a more densely developed area. The line's design aimed to accommodate future expansion and increased safety and accessibility standards, which also added to the costs. The Scarborough Subway Extension, However, which is an extension of Line 2, Bloor Danforth, to replace the Scarborough RT, is, pro is projected to cost approximately $5.5 billion for a 7.8-kilometer line. This price tag has escalated considerably since initial estimates and may increase even further. Unlike the previous projects, this extension has faced prolonged delays design changes, and local opposition that have contributed to rising costs. Additional challenges, like tunneling through densely populated areas, stricter environmental regulations, and rising material and labor costs have driven the budget higher. While we have gone up significantly in costs for building subways in Toronto, here are the costs in other cities, just as a comparison. New York City is often cited as one of the most expensive cities for subway construction, with recent projects like the 2nd Avenue subway costing around $2.5 billion per kilometer. However, New York faces similar challenges to Toronto, such as dense urban, uh, urban infrastructure, high land acquisition costs, and regulatory hurdles. London's Crossrail project, a 21-kilometer tunnel system, ended up costing around $1 billion per kilometer. Like Toronto, London must account for heritage buildings, complex underground utilities, and strict safety and environmental regulations that are in place. Paris Grand Paris Express project involved 200 kilometers of a new metro line, with costs averaging of about 300 million per kilometer. Notably lower than Toronto's recent projects, Paris has achieved lower costs partly by establishing a centralized project management structure and streamlining regulatory processes. There are several factors that contribute to the skyrocketing costs of subway construction in Toronto. In Toronto, the landscape has evolved significantly with more utilities, denser neighborhoods, and fewer open spaces for staging and tunneling. Modern tunneling under densely populated areas is costlier and requires precise engineering to avoid disrupting existing infrastructure. Over the decades, regulations have become stricter in terms of environmental impacts, worker safety, and accessibility. These standards add layers of planning and additional materials, labor, and technologies to meet new codes, further dividing up costs. Subway construction now requires land for stations, entrances, and other facilities, which means purchasing land or compensating property owners, significantly raising costs compared to the 1950s, when land acquisition was simpler and less costly. Inflation affects the cost of construction materials like steel and concrete, while labor costs have also risen. The specialized labor required for subway construction has also become more expensive, particular, particularly given the shortage of skilled workers in Canada's construction industry. Public consul consultations and community engagement processes 
are now essential, adding time and cost to projects. Political shifts can also impact projects, as changing administrations might adjust priorities, funding or project scope, causing costly delays or redesigns. Today's subway stations are designed with modern amenities, including accessibility features, more extensive ventilation, and digital systems for lighting, security, and signage. While these improvements enhance the transit experience, they also obviously add to the complexity and cost of the construction. The rising costs of Toronto's subway projects reflect a shift, from, a shift from simpler mid 20th century engineering to today's highly regulated, technologi technologically driven, and densely urban construction landscape. With each project, Toronto grapples with balancing transit expansion with the realities of escalating costs and future extensions are likely to see even greater budget demands unless innovative cost-cutting measures or alternative funding approaches are implemented. While high construction costs in Toronto are, lar are largely driven by some legitimate factors like urban density and complex approval processes, there are signs of inefficiencies that make costs higher than necessary. By, by addressing areas like streamlined project management, competitive bidding, and centralized control, Toronto could likely see fairer costs closer to the international average. But what I think personally is that the costs should be more transparent. It's hard to justify an additional billion dollars for a subway line and then not be able to detail these. I think that the public should know what this money is spent on and how it's spent. There are prices and costs that are reasonable and legitimate. However, if the public cannot understand and see what these details are, then it's just not transparent, obviously. I would personally be really interested in seeing what the cost breakdowns are for these projects so that we can see if they are reasonable and who this money is going to. For example, if it was claimed for land acquisition, then I would want to see how much went to who and if it was a fair market value. And I think that we should be able to see that. But when the government just says that they need a few billion dollars for some land acquisition, inflation and tricky construction, just because and because, let's just say I'm not a customer. I think that it would only be fair for us to disclose the amounts in detail so that we can understand what is going on. Wouldn't you agree? Let me know in the comments. I hope that you liked the video. If so, please give it a like. If you're not subscribed and want to be notified of new videos that are released, please click on the Art Toronto button here. This is the video that I would recommend for you to watch next, and I'm sure that you're going to love it. Here's the playlist for all of the latest in transit news and views that you're going to find very informative and interesting. And finally, here's the latest video. Thanks for watching, and happy transiting.